Minister. I'm returning to a theme I've raised lots of times in relation to the Help to Buy scheme. And I'm asking, what are your plans for phasing out that scheme? What further analysis is there in question? And I say that, and I have read all of the reviews, the analysis and the commentaries that clearly identify serious concerns with this scheme. And uh, I'll come back to that in my two other supplemental questions. was introduced in 2017 with the purpose of assisting first-time buyers with the deposit required to purchase or self build a new house or apartment to live in as their home. As you're aware, the Finance Act of 2022 uh, extended the Help to Buy scheme for a further two years to the end of 2024. To date, the scheme has been a significant support for first-time buyers of new homes. Since its inception uh, until uh, April of 2023, some 38,557 first-time buyers, either singly or as part of a couple, have benefited from the scheme. I note that the Deputy has previously had concerns regarding the potential that the scheme may exacerbate housing prices. As has previously been stated, policymakers were aware at the time that the scheme was being developed, uh, that it was not without risk. Likewise, they were aware that there was a danger that against the background of constrained supply, the initiative could serve to increase prices for new homes, thus potentially undermining to some extent the affordability aspiration uh, of the scheme. However, on all occasions, and the matter was formally examined to date, concerns in this regard were not borne out by the review data. Studies carried out by Indicon economic consultants found that the main driver of house prices was the mismatch between supply and demand rather than the existence of the scheme. Similarly, the review by Mazars uh, last year found that there is no definitive evidence that helped to buy pushed up the price of new houses. In fact, Mazars found that the prices paid for new homes by people who received the help to buy relief were slightly lower than new house prices in the economy in general, likely because of the €500,000 price eligibility cap. The review last year recommended that a more appropriate non-tax expenditure policy mechanism to address the market failure should be designed to replace help to buy. Having considered the report in the Finance Bill last year, my predecessor proposed extending help to buy for a further two years in its current form. The approach was in accordance with a recommendation in the report and took account of both the cost of the scheme to date and the need for certainty in the market while awaiting the increase in new housing supply uh, envisaged by the government's Housing for All uh, strategy. Thank you, Minister. Deputy. Over 38,000 people have benefited from the scheme. My question relates to the analysis that has been done. And I think you're selectively quoting from Mazars and, and other reports. This was, as you well know, was introduced in January 17. That's over six years ago. It was estimated to cost 40 million annually. It turned out to cost 175 million in 2022. And it looks like it'll be up to a billion. What did Mazars, our, our, uh, Mazars say? that it was a regressive, the scheme is poorly targeted with respect to incomes, location, house prices and other socio-economic factors. It is socially, at a socially regressive impact and it goes on, it has dead weight. The Parliamentary Budget Office, one third of the recipients did not need the Help to Buy scheme to meet the 10% deposit. And it goes, ESRI, a review of the Help to Buy scheme suggests that many households with large deposits have received support under this scheme. ESRI, it's likely to contribute to higher house prices. Now, I know you're saying there's no definitive evidence in relation to an increase in house prices, but there are serious concerns in relation to this scheme and Thank who it's deputy. benefiting. Senator. When we, we talk about statistics and 38,500 people benefiting from the scheme, uh, I know many of them personally, as I'm sure you do, and without the Help to Buy scheme, the truth is that many of those people would not have been able to buy a home. I mean, that is the reality, uh, in my view, and I support the decision that was made uh, by my predecessor. The extension of the scheme to 2024 provides certainty, and I think what we need in the housing market is as much certainty as possible, uh, first of all, to uh, developers so that they are aware of what the environment in which they're developing is, and then that we assist with affordability. 
and that we assist first-time buyers uh, in purchasing a home. And you know, the, down the years, there have been different forms of support uh, to help first-time buyers uh, to uh, purchase a property. And I think this one has proven to be effective. I'm well aware it has its critics, uh, but I want to be very clear that the decision that has been made to extend it to the end of 2024 uh, is one that I support, uh, is one that I stand by, uh, and we will honour that. And of course, we always keep taxation matters under review. So the future of the scheme beyond that date is something that I will consider uh, in future budgets. Thank you, Minister. Deputy. Wisdom in these matters. I'm not even given my opinion here. I'm looking at the various reports, poorly targeted in respect to, uh, to the, uh, the schemes poorly targeted with respect to incomes, location, house prices, regressive impacts. The problem that it sought to address remain and the specific market failure at which it was targeted are not likely to be addressed. And on and on we go from the ESRI, Social Justice Ireland, Mazars, <coughs> Revenue and whatever other report I've read. Regressive, poorly targeted, the help is not needed by over a third of those who have benefited. Yes, I'm acutely aware of the people that have benefited. And I also know that many of them had the deposit, just like is borne out here, over one third. Parliamentary Budget Office, overview of the help to buy scheme. One third of recipients did not need this help to meet the deposit requirements. And, and so it goes on through. Mazar said to scrap it, but not now. Why not scrap it now? Because it's embedded and there's a market expectation and it fits in with your policies of buying up the market at all costs. That's why we can scrap it just now. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Minister. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because we do support home ownership. And the truth is that uh, this is uh, a key affordability intervention. Uh, without this scheme, many people who will sleep in homes tonight across the country, in every county in Ireland, would not have those homes um, if this scheme did not exist. Uh, that is my view, and that is why uh, the government has supported uh, this scheme. You talk about targeting, you talk about it being regressive. Your question has asked for plans for the phasing out of the Help to Buy yep. scheme. Yep. So I take it you're against the scheme and you believe that the scheme should be brought to an I'm end. I'm going by what the reports have asked you to do, to phase it out, scrap it, but not now. That's what I'm going by here. The very you, experts... Billy? Sorry, I beg your pardon. No, look, yeah. I, I take your point yeah. that you're, you're drawing that wording from, uh, from the reports. Um, it's and and I, I, take, I, I take that to be your, your position on it. I with you. I think the, the scheme has an important role to play. It's here until at least 2024, and we will keep it under review and make clear in future budgets what the position is beyond that date. Thank you, Minister. Uh, 